Now then, hello. I still need to change that intro and add the cues bunny bit at the end. Okay, welcoming everybody. So I've not been live for a while on this channel, um, but we are live now. So I want to say thank you to everybody who's come in. I just want to say quickly, I did mention this earlier on my other live stream on my other channel. I was going to put this in the video, but I decided to do it live. But because I want to keep this quite short, because I want to get this information out, a lot of people will be watching on the replay because they don't, they don't get to watch it live. And I also want to share this out to get the information out to as many people as possible. So I'm not going to be engaged in any chat, but you're all welcome in here. Chat amongst yourselves. Uh, I want to say a massive thank you to our moderators, who is pretty much everybody. A big up to our managing moderators. Uh, and thank you to our members. You can join the membership. You get exclusives. If you want to watch, see the bunnies and, and the dog and, and the ninny wig and all that sort of stuff. So you can join the membership. Um, and I want to say a massive thank you to our channel members in our little club. And then I'm going to continue with the show. So we've got 32 people watching. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a deep dive into this. A lot of people haven't heard of it. So I'm not ignoring anybody in chat, but I'm not going to be reading chat. I'm just FYI. But uh, hello, hello, hello. Now. I heard about this a couple of years ago, but I never looked into it, and I should have. Now, um, the more and more I'm looking into this, the more I personally think we should be concerned. I'm hoping that nothing comes of this, but it is quite concerning what is going on with these red heifers. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a backstory on this, and then we're going to have a look at what's happening right now with them. So first of all, we're going to do a bit of a deep dive. Now, the red heifer story is in it comes from the Old Testament. And I'm going to get some articles up in a moment. It comes from the Old Testament and it is talking about bringing back the third temple. Now, this is in Israel and it is not all Jews. So I just want to make that clear from the beginning. This is not about bashing any religion or any people or any country. I, it is not all Jews. It is the ultra nationalist Jews that, that are doing this. So not all Jews. There are some also some extreme Christian involved in this as well. So it is actually extreme nationalist Jews, what ultra orthodox Jews and some ultra orthodox Christians um, want, uh, that, that still believe in the Old Testament. Remember, the Jewish uh, book is the, the Talmud, but this isn't from the Talmud. This is from the Holy Bible, the Old Testament. So let's have a quick look at some background. So I'm just going to grab some articles up. So just bear with me a sec. And again, I want to say thank you to everybody who's here. Please hit the like if you enjoy the content. Dislike if you don't. I won't be offended. At the end of the show, I will be giving away some uh, memberships. I think we'll do some. OK, so just bear with me a moment. OK, just give me a sec. I'm just going to grab these articles up. I think it's pretty obvious what ultra and extreme mean. You're going to get people that follow everything to a T, literally word for word. And then you're going to get people who are very loose with it. That's what it means when, when we talk about the, the ultra nationalist Jews and the ultra Christians that are that literally follow everything to a T. That's what I'm talking about. Right, okay. Just going to grab this up now. Oh, thank you. So I'm going to try to get articles from different sources. So I don't want to get just a Muslim perspective because the Muslims are extremely concerned and I don't blame them. Um, there's the, the Jewish are reporting on this. So 
what we want to do um, is look at all different sources. So some that might be pro this happening, some that might be anti this happening, some that are indifferent. And what does it mean? Because it's, to, in my opinion, I'm just going to tell you straight out, I think this is evil. I think this is cruel. Um, and it is deeply distressing for any animal lover to see this. Now, when the Bible was written all those years ago, at the beginning of the millennia, no, the last millennia, I'm getting, yeah. When the Bible was written, they didn't have animal rights. No one, you know, these, we live in 2024 now where there's laws, there's rules. We don't just go around uh, hurting animals. So I want to, I'm going to tag Petter and I'm going to send this to Petter because where are they in all this? I haven't heard them speak up. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Petter have spoken up about this. If you are easily upset, which I am, it's going to be really difficult for me to do, but I'm going to do it because it needs to be done. If you are easily upset, don't listen to this part now, okay? But these cows are not your average cow. A red heifer is extremely rare. Now, they're supposed to be born in Israel, um, but these are actually from Texas. So there's five of them. Looks like six there. Now, this photo here, okay, this picture was taken on April the 27th, and it shows members of the Bonnet, I might have said that wrong, I'm sorry if I have, Bonnet Israel, uh, which means Building Israel Organization. So these are, this is one of the ultra-nationalist people. Uh, and it's, I'm not going to try and say the names. They are feeding red heifer cows that were imported by the organization from the US. So these have come from Texas. At a farm in Hamadia, near the northern city of Beit Shorn. So here they are last April, so a year ago, and they've got the cows. Um, I don't know where this is. This Is this in Israel? I don't know. I need to check. I, I, I am being told that these cows are in Israel now, okay? Beyond the political dimensions of the ongoing war in Gaza, this goes on. Because remember, there's a lot going on in the um, in the Middle East, okay? There exists a deep religious undertone on both sides. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be looking at this from any side, by the way. I'm just looking at what's going on can, from a completely objective point of view. I just want to say that. Um, if people start arguing pro-Israel, pro-Palestine, pro pro-this, pro-that, you waste your time. I'm not going to be debating in chat. I'm not even reading the chat. I trust our moderators in the chat. I'm just going through what's happening and what it means, what it could mean. So not going to be taking any sides, all right? So it goes on here. It traces back to the establishment of Zionist occupation state in 1948. Uh, they're talking about the war in Gaza justified on the grounds of religious scripture as a God-given right to Jews. Yet despite its religious exterior, Zionism is a secular ideology committed to forcing prophecies representing a mockery of the faith. This is, this is quotes, okay? So it goes on here. The Zionist state has its detractors from the Jewish faith. Apart from secular Jews against Zionism, some ultra-Orthodox Jews oppose Israel on religious grounds, believing that the establishment of a Jewish state should come about after the coming of the Messiah. OK, so they don't think that Israel should be there yet because Jesus hasn't come back. They rightfully view the current state of Israel, again, I'm quoting, for what it is, a secular entity with man-made laws established by humans rather than a fulfillment of divine prophecy. So these are the ultra-Orthodox Jews. They, they don't believe that Israel should be there right now because we haven't had the coming of the Messiah. 
it goes on. The cut for Christian Zionists. Okay, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but I need to explain this bit to then go on to the next bit. Okay. For Christian Zionists, the creation of Israel was a fulfillment of biblical prophecy, leading to the second coming of the prophet Jesus, who Muslims also await. Yet like the regathering of Jews and the creation of Israel, there is another awaited promise related to the end times. This is where we get into the cow thing. OK, so I'm going to repeat that last bit. Like the regathering of Jews and the creation of Israel was a fulfillment of biblical prophecy leading to the second coming of the prophet Jesus. And the Muslims await him too. So this is for Christian Zionists now. This is for the Christian extremists. Yet, like the regathering of Jews and the re creation of Israel, there is another awaited promise related to the end times which is the building of the third temple on the site of the al Ask Mosque in Jerusalem. OK, so there's a mosque in Jerusalem on the site where these uh, particular group of Jewish and Christian people want to build this third temple. Before this, before they can build the temple, there is another forced prophecy being prepared in the coming days with strong religious significance, the, sa the sacrifice of the red heifer. Now, what I'm going to do now is tell you that I'm told and everything that I'm looking at, I'm pulling up different articles in different places, uh, pointing towards this is going to be happening in the next uh between any any day now up till the middle of may now they haven't given us an, an exact date all right they won't do but i am told that these cows are now in uh israel okay so now there there is a twitter page here i'm not going to say the name of it because it will get me shut down but they do explain the story of it. And there's a little TikTok video, which I don't really want to watch. OK, I'm just explaining to you the background of this. So the red heifer, also known as the para aduma, probably said that wrong. I apologize. In Hebrew, holds a significant place in Jewish tradition and is seen as an indicator that the Messiah, Messianic, can't say that, Messianic age is approaching. OK, so the end times, particularly in relation to the coming of the Jewish Messiah and the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. So I'm going to have a I'm not going to read it all because it goes into quite a lot of. Uh, into a lot, it's just in Jewish tradition, the red heifer holds a special place as a symbol of purity. And atonement. According to the book of Numbers in the Hebrew Bible, the ashes of a red heifer were used in the purification rituals for those who had come into contact with a dead body, which was considered a source of ritual impurity. So if you've ever uh, seen a dead person or touched a dead person, then you're not pure anymore. According to this, OK, according to the, the Hebrew Bible. The rarity of an unbellished red heifer meeting the specific specific criteria outlined in Jewish law adds to its significance. So it's got to hit certain criteria for this very rare red cow. It is believed that the ashes of a red heifer have the power to purify the impure and enable the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. Even two black hairs would render it invalid. This, this is the red heifer, okay? And it must not have done any work in its lifetime. These are the rules for this perfect cow. Even having a yoke placed on its back or having mated would disqualify it. The website mentions that there have only been nine such heifers in all of history. And our tradition tells us that there will be one more in the future. 
noting that previous sacrificial ceremonies took place on the Mount of Olives, opposite the Temple Mount. Now, if you remember, there's so much going on in the Middle East at the moment. And we've also got old uh, David Cameron. He was he was in this region recently as well, which is, I think that is another, another part of this. But let's just get into the history of it and then we'll get into what's happening right now. It appears there is a growing momentum among some fringe Zionists in Israel who are looking to fast track divine prophecies with regards to the red heifer in 2022 five unbellished red heifers so these perfect ones from texas arrived in israel reportedly donated by a devout christian rancher so a christian rancher bred these cows very rarely that are they do they get born and he is extremely like wants this third temple as well is a you know a very extreme Christian, and he sent them, donated them um, from Texas. They arrived in Israel where they were kept in the Shiloh, Shiloh, might say that wrong, I apologise, settlement north of Ramallah. The project is overseen by the Jewish-based Temple Institute, who have been planning for years to artificially breed their own red heifer using surrogacy techniques so these guys because there hasn't been any these guys were going to make their own okay now there's been some born in texas now they do state i'm just going to put the link into this so if anyone wants to go and read this for themselves they can they do state that they've got to be born in israel but these were born in texas but they're the closest thing they're going to get without being fake you know artificial so got here the zionists this is stan for palestine have posted on twitter this was last month not that long ago the zionists have constructed the altar on which they plan to slaughter the red heifer so i'm going to get into that in a minute they have constructed this but i just want to get a little bit more into the history of it there has already been a construction they've already done a construction of a sacrificial altar for the beast according to a report earlier this month by CBS. A massive altar has already been constructed for the purpose. However, a report by Israel 365 News dismisses the report as a lie, stating the structure in the video is a model of the altar as it stood in the temple. The real altar must be made of stone. The model located in I can't read that. Miss B. Jericho is used for temple service reenactments and educational purposes. So they're, they're denying it. Someone's lying. Someone's telling the truth. I don't know which side. I'm not going to take sides. It is not made of stone and cannot be used for the temple service. On, the, on Wednesday, the 27th of March, a conference was held by the Temple Institute on the Shula settlement in occupied West Bank on preparation for the red heifer rituals, which some observers say will be done in April. We're talking about now, this month, Purport, purportedly coinciding with Eid. Now, Eid has just happened, and as far as we are aware, there hasn't been any cows sacrificed, as far as we're aware. It says here, let me, let me read on. Should an event take place, it will be a dangerous provocation. And I think personally that this is why, and I might be wrong, there's all this trouble in the Middle East at the moment because it's like a distraction. This is just what I might be wrong, okay? This is just my opinion that while we're talking about all of this, what's going on in the news and everything, we're not talking about the cows. Right, the moo cows that they want to do this to. And it's upsetting for me because I love animals. So it's not this is not easy for me, but I think this is important to get out. So according to the top uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad official, the goal of the Alask Mosque flood, uh, flood operation is to prevent the targeting of Alask Mosque. 
So to, to build the third temple, if it's on the same spot as the mosque is, they would have to get rid of the mosque, which is just going to cause more trouble, isn't it? No matter what side you're on, it's going to cause more trouble. Disparaging or insulting of Muslim religious rights, assault of our women, efforts to Judaize and the al Ask mosque and normalize Israeli occupation of it or divide it temporarily and sparsely. Moreover, in his speech marking the 100th day of war, uh, Hamas said the bringing of red cows as an application of a detestable religious myth designed for aggression against the feelings of an entire nation in the heart of its Arab identity and the path of its prophet, the night journey and ascension to heaven. OK, it then goes on about the war in Gaza, which I'm not going to get into because that Again, I, I'm not going to get into that here. Uh, it says here, the appending slaughter of a genetically modified cow is just the latest manifestation of this agenda. Now, they're saying they're from Texas. OK, so we don't know that's true at all. So I'm giving you a little bit of a, um, a backlog. OK, so what they're going to do with the cow is everything's got to be done perfectly. They've got to have a specific altar built by stone. And basically, without wanting to sound upsetting and horrible, and it's difficult for me, they will burn the cow. They will burn the cow even with its dung in it. It's disgusting, I know. Um, let me just get another article up for you. Just give me a minute. found quite a few earlier, actually. But um, again, which is what happened last time, um, they disappeared. I don't get it. Uh, okay. Just give me a sec, guys. So the next one I'm going to be looking at will be um, the time that they think this is going to happen. And then we'll get into a little bit more of... There's, there's one of them there. So these are being looked after. So this is from Al Jazeera. So this, I'm just letting you know that this is, um, this, yeah, this is Al Jazeera. So I always cite my sources and I'll put the link in in a moment. So it, a lot of this is the same as what I've just spoken about, but there's a little bit more um, information here. So it says these red effers uh, and the, archaic ritual that were brought to Israel for, to, for stand at the heart of a convoluted effort by a segment of ultra-nationalist Jews to destroy the Alask Mosque compound, the third holiest site in Islam that has stood on the hill in the old city of Jerusalem for more than a thousand years. So this, this mosque has been there all that time and they want to replace it with a third temple. This minority ultra-nationalist push flies in the face of Jewish scholarship, which rules that a third temple can only be constructed after the coming of the awaited Messiah to usher in the kingdom of God and not to bring about the return of the Messiah. So by doing this with these cows, they're trying to usher in the return of Jesus Christ, which would then bring about the end times. The rapture, when people, this is all about the rapture when people go up. Now, in America, they talk a lot about the rapture. But in, in UK, I know that in Church of England, it's hardly mentioned, the rapture. OK. Um, it says here, members of these temple movement groups are also pushing to perform Jewish, Jewish rites in the mosque in violation of the chief Rabbinate's long-standing prohibition of the presence of Jews at the mosque. So you've got some Jews don't want this to happen either. This isn't just a Jewish thing, okay? So no one, if you know any Jewish people, don't think for one second that every Jew thinks this, okay? And every Christian thinks this. But remember that that Benjamin Net and Hayu, whatever his name is, he is, he. He is ultra nationalist, he is a far right Jew, and that's just a fact. He is, and from what I'm hearing and reading, I don't know how true it is because I'm not there, but 
But from what I'm hearing and reading, they, they don't want him anymore. They, they want an election. But that's just what I'm hearing and reading. Again, I don't know. I'm not there. Um, right, right wing Israeli groups are seeking to fulfill a Jewish prophecy where a sacrifice in a flawless red heifer, as we know, on Jerusalem's Mount of Olives to pave way for the construction of the third temple. So if this cow is actually uh, sacrificed, that means they're going to go ahead and do it. So they're saying that in the pro in the Bible, in the prophecy, in the Hebrew Bible, this shouldn't happen until Jesus comes back. Then they do the sacrifice, then they build the temple. They're trying to force that to happen. They're trying to force it. They're trying to create the end times to bring back Jesus. This is worrying, guys. In, the, in my opinion, this is worrying. So here you go. Here's a little map. So there's the old city of Jerusalem there. Remember, there's all these troubles here. Um, and then you've got the mosque there, which is quite a big mosque, the compound of it. And then there's this Mount of Olives here. So it's only half a mile away. The first now it's, we're going to talk about this is the history of it now. OK, so we're going to talk about the history of it. So the first temple stood from 1000 to 586 BCE. So this is how old the first one was. The second from 515 BCE to 70 AD. So that's the two. And the third temple is what the ultra-nationalist organisations have been working towards for decades. Palestinians have for decades feared that Israel attempts to take over the Alask Mosque, which is the direction Muslims used to pray, are used to pray towards before the Kaaba in Mecca. These fears have been particularly acute since 1967 when Israel illegally occupied East Jerusalem along with the West Bank and Gaza in the wake of the 1967 war. I just want to add as well, like I'm no expert, but the, when you think of Palestine, yeah, majority of them are Muslim, but there's also Christians in Palestine as well. They're not all Muslim. There are Christians. I'm just having a drink. Just give me a sec, folks. I just want to say that drone came back, you know. There was a drone last uh, earlier on. Really high. Came back. I could hear it in the back of my garden again. Okay. Um, right then. So according to the reasoning of these ultra-nationalist Jewish organisations like the Temple Institute, the third temple cannot be built until the Alaska Mosque is destroyed. So can you imagine if Israel go in and destroy this mosque in, in Jerusalem? Can you just imagine what that's going to cause? Considering how volatile the region is, it, it's just constant provocation. That's my opinion. But I'm trying to stay. I'm trying to be objective, but I can't deny that that's going to cause trouble. Uh, it goes on, um, along with garments, utensils and hundreds of men of a particular lineage have to do it, who, who have been trained for the priesthood, who all stand ready to serve in this temple. So they've got these people from certain bloodlines ready to go. They take this really seriously, don't they? The purification is for a mix of ashes. So this this purification has to happen for anyone to enter this temple. And this is how they, I'm going to read to you now why they need the red heifer and how it gets purified. So what they have to do, they have to burn the red heifer alive, which is just horrendous, but I'm just, yeah. They have to burn the red heifer. This is how they get this purification. It's part of the ritual. Everything's got to be done to a T on this really bizarre ritual. So they've got to sacrifice the red heifer, red yarn, cedar wood and hyssop with fresh spring water collected by ritually 
ritually, not rich, ritually pure children, listen to this, who were born and raised under certain conditions. So they've even got children from these families lineage who have been born and raised under this, this strict uh, conditions, right? I don't even want to know what they are. I can't even imagine what they are. And these strict conditions, they have to then go and collect the water um, after you've slaughtered the cow, sacrificed the cow, sorry. Uh, and then this ash mixture, so you have to mix the the, the ash of the, the the red heifer that's been burnt alive to death. Mix that uh, with the water. Um, the ash mixture is believed to, to remain effective for up to 100 years and can be mixed with spring water as needed. So they need to do that to then cleanse themselves. Only those who are cleansed with this ash spring water mix that's gone through all these different, um, you know, certain things like who can get the water and the car and all that stuff. Um. Only these people that have been cleansed are allowed to enter the third temple as well. So they're not only to build it and to create it, they can only enter it. Now, Jewish people who are not born in Israel are still allowed to enter this temple, by the way, uh, as long as they've been cleansed with this ash. This ash is going a long way, isn't it? Blimey. The search for these pure red heifers is not new. They've been at this for years, guys, um, and has been the main name of the Temple Institute since its founding in 1987, with fundraising efforts to breed one through IVF and search all over the world for one. Until 2022, when five, as I mentioned earlier, red yearlings were donated by an evangelical farmer from Texas and flown to Israel. Listen to this bit here and were donated as pets to get around restrictions. This is what I didn't like as well, to get around restrictions on importing live animals as livestock at the time. So you're not allowed to just import livestock. They got around this by... Let's make this a bit bigger. So they got around this by saying that they were for pets. Didn't like that either. I mean, that's really naughty. Um, so it says here, there has also been efforts to secure and prepare a plot of land on the Mount of Olives, which overlooks the mosque compound, which would enable the priest overseeing the killing of the heifer to sprinkle her blood towards the mosque as detailed in the Bible. So they're saying now that they can still do it with the mosque there, but they've got to be facing the mosque. And I did show you a map a minute ago. Let me just show you a map again. Um, further up somewhere there. So there's the mosque. There's the old city of Jerusalem. Half a mile away is the Mount of Olives. So they've already set up a piece of this land. And then they've got to do all this face in the mosque. I think it's bloody evil. But then I do think all of this is evil. Now, why hasn't this been in the news? They're trying to bring in the bloody... Um, the end times here they're trying to summon Jesus back to summon in the end times this is not what the Bible should be about and I don't think it is what it's about but you know what do I know okay um, let me just get back here now this is the worrying part there are indications that the temple movement are preparing to sacrifice a red heifer with the support of the Israeli government. Remember, they are ultra-nationalist right-wing at the moment under that Netanyahu, who, if anyone can check for me, but I'm pretty certain um, they, they, they're they overdue elections. Can anyone confirm that? I might be wrong. I'm pretty certain that they're, they're not holding them because they're at so-called war. I know that there's a lot of people that want him out. Anyway, it goes on. Um, so they believe that the sacrifice is intimate now. The Israeli Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development circumvented protocols when initially seeking permission 
to import the red heifers. So they've already got them. IR Amin noted in a report in August, an example of increasing government involvement as the US was not a country approved for the import of live animals at the time. Let me just see if I can find this report. Hold on. Right, okay. So the report is here. I'm not going to read it all out, but I'm just going to pop a little link in here. This is to the full report. Okay. So just that's just an FYI. If you want to save that and put it to one side, if you want to read it in detail at a later time. If you're watching on the replay, we've got the replay crew, please hit the like. And if you want to check any of these links out, you can just check them out in the uh, live chat box, which will be remaining open after, so you can read the chat. Okay, where was we? So, oh, look at these idiots here. Absolutely pathetic. Get a life, man. Get a life. Um, right then, the Israeli Ministry of Rural and Culture Circumvented Protocols. Right, we've read that bit. Um, and admitted that the ministry has been funding the development of the Mount of Olives where the ceremony is planned. So they've already got this, this ready, okay? So what they're saying here is this seems to me like it's already been, they're already at it now. They're already at it. Oh, thank you, Amethyst, my love. In a video from January this year uh, on Bona Israel's website, Michael Samuel Smith, a Christian preacher, another so it's a Christian working to bring forth the temple prophecy, said the red heifers have been raising in Shilla have come of sacrificial age. So these are all the indications that this is about to happen. There are lots and lots of indications of this. Okay. So they've come of age. It goes on. This is the first time in nearly 2,000 years that a successful red heifer has come about. Uh, Smith said in the video, it is still our opinion the first successful red heifer sacrifice will take place in the spring of 2024 around the Passover to Pentecost time frame. She's coming up. We believe God. This is what he said. So this is this Michael Sm Samuel Smith is a Christian preacher. Who's part of this as well. We believe that God is going to reveal himself through the efforts of this future event. So they're trying to bring back God. End time shit. It is truly a sign of the times, most especially for Jews in Israel. Passover will be towards the end of April this year, guys. Well, Pentecost is in mid-May. So this is why this, this stream was so important. Now, I'm hoping that nothing happens. I'm hoping they don't do it, right? And I'm hoping if they do do it, then obviously they don't bring, bring around the end times. But because this is happening right now, I think this is really important. That's why I wanted to um, talk about it tonight. I wanted to just get this video out of all the information, out of all the links and everything. So if Pat, so they, they want to do it around Passover to Pentecost. So any time from the end of this month to the middle of May, this could happen. I don't know what you guys think of this. Um, we've got 67 people here. I hope you're all enjoying the live stream. Um, I... I I just want to know, where are the animal rights campaigners about this? Like, why isn't no one worried about the moo cows? I'm just having a quick drink. Give me a sec. Right, I'm back. I was drinking my tea. Sorry about that. Okay, 67. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I pet goat too. I have broke that down before, but it was a long time ago. So, 
yeah, I pet to, I pet goat too. It's very interesting. Um, there's so much in there. Like every time I watch it, there's something new in there. And if you come across an I pet goat three, ignore it. It's not made by the same people. I think the reason why it's called that is because, if I remember rightly, um, I can't really go into too much, but George Bush was reading uh, I Pet Go upside down, I think. I might be wrong. So, it, what is this ceremonial burning? What exactly is a red heifer? So, this is going into the details. Um, this is not all clear. This is not at all clear or known because the last time this was done... It was done when there was a Jewish temple 2,000 years ago. So it's not 100% clear until recently there have been some extreme and fringe people who were working on it. But very few people took it seriously. So it says here, defending the Alask is an important mission for Palestinian Muslims, worshippers and armed fighters alike. So we all need to, what they're saying is, is that the Muslims are trying to save the mosque. And really, we should all be wanting the mosque saved because if we save the mosque, this can't happen. Well, it can, but they said they're going to do it without with the mosque still there, didn't they? <sighs> I'm just going to read a little bit more into it. Hold on. I don't want to go too much into he said, she said business. So this, this saying here that he believes that the Israeli government want to destroy the mosque, that's not enough for me. That's just an opinion. I don't want to really go with that. Um, so I don't underestimate the danger of these groups, but building the temple means a completely different Israel from today. So, like it just said there, it was basically saying that this, if Jesus returns, the Messiah returns, or God returns, then and only then should this um, red heifer happen, right? Now, these people, they want to bring it through, they want it to, they want to force it through. And I find this deeply distressing, like, I can't even begin to explain how this must, you know, this is a, this is an animal, you know, this is an animal. Um, let me just, now, the, the fact checkers are out as, as usual, so let me just see what they're saying about this, because I've noticed when I started looking, I started researching this last week, I did notice a lot of the main news were saying this is nothing about the end times. And, you know, when they're coming out and saying all this, then that's when you should be worried. You know, the fact checkers, they, they love it all, don't they? They absolutely love it. Right. Oh, God, I'm getting all this crap now. So having a quick look now, okay, a uh, quick gander through the internet. Just bear with me. So I've just found this this article here, and it just sa it go basically says it is said that this is where the world began, Israel, uh, well, the Holy Land, Jerusalem, and perhaps where it will end. The true epicenter of the war in the Holy Land is not the devastated Gaza Strip under Israel assault since Hamas's bloody raid last October sparked the deadliest conflict in decades. It is a few dozen miles away in Jerusalem at the holiest site and most fiercely contested hilltop on earth. The war has increased religious tensions and given new impetus to a group of Jews and their evolangical Christian allies. So there again, this isn't just Jews, this is Christians as well. I'm rebuilding this ancient temple, which we've now spoken about, where a millennium old uh, Islamic shrine now stand. So they've been preparing the cows. Um, the architectural designs are all ready to go along the lines of the detailed biblical inscriptions. Robes have been woven already and utensils have been assembled to biblical specifications for the ceremonies at the planned temple. 
So everything is pointing towards this is going to happen. So I genuinely believe, folks, we need to keep an eye on the Middle East. Now, if nothing was happening there, I would be a little bit less worried. But there's a lot happening there at the moment, as you know. Um, Iran retaliating, I fully expected that. And we're being fed a lot of stuff um, from the mainstream media in, in the UK that the Iron Dome saved, uh, nothing hit. And we scrambled, the UK scrambled uh, RAF jets to um, shoot the ones down that, that got missed. Well, from everything I'm seeing and hearing from um, independent media is that some of them did get hit. There was targets hit. I don't know how true that was, but I did read that some aircraft were hit, some F-35s um, in a military base in Israel, but I don't know. I've seen footage of it, but you don't know, do you? Because they fake stuff. Um, I also just want to add that where's Parliament in all this? Why, was, why wasn't Parliament um, debated on whether we were to scramble jets last night? Because they knew for hours before that Iran was about to retaliate. Now, now, Iran, people saying, oh, re Iran are, are provo provocating. It was actually Israel that bombed um, in Damascus last week the Iranian embassy in Syria and killed some Iranian generals. That was, that was an act that was, um, that was unprovoked. They just did that. So it, this is what it's so complicated. This is why I don't really get into the Middle East a lot because it's so complicated and there's so many feelings for and against both sides. And I try to stay out of it as much as I can. But because of this red heifer thing, I think we have to we can't ignore it anymore. All right. This is happening. The, the irony is what they did. It was on April Fool's Day when they did that when they did that, um, killed those generals. Anyway, so the ramping up of all this, the, um, you know, the the attacks, the, the, the so many people are being killed in Gaza, the murder of all the, uh, the Israelis at the concert and the hostages, it's really ramping up in that area. And I personally feel that it's the West that seem to be ramping everything up and Jordan, who is their king, he's actually extremely uh, Western, should we say. And Jordan, he's got Jordan back in the US and the UK. But that's another matter for another day. But as a whole, most of the Middle Eastern countries and the Muslim countries, they want peace. They don't want the war with the US and the UK. It just seems to me that the, the West are trying to constantly provoke. They want to get Russia involved. They want to get Iran involved. And let's not forget as well that North Korea came out yesterday and said that they will, if, if Iran gets attacked, North Korea are going to join in. So at the moment, I don't want to stress anybody out because that's the last thing I want to do, right? Personally, I don't think it's all going to happen because I think the people... Uh, the the block is it the what is it the brick people so China North Korea Iran that side of things I don't think that they want any of this they don't want it and I think that's that's good I think that's really good um, it's the West that keep going but with what's been happening people are waking up and they're losing the information war in my opinion. Uh, the West are losing it big time because especially when they killed the aid workers the other week, that was just horrific. Anyway, I don't want to really want to get into politics and all that because it, it's ju I'm just trying to stick to facts. And these are the facts that these cows are ready. The ceremonial robes are ready. The utensils are ready. And it could happen any time from mid-April, sorry, the end of April to mid-May. If I hear anything on this, I'll obviously let you all know because I find it rather concerning. 
Um, I'm just reading this now. Hold on. Masonic. Sorry. Yeah. Messianic, not Masonic. Uh, Messianic, or I can't say, Jewish supporters believe the rebuilding of the temple, rather than being divisive, would fulfill biblical prophecy to bring an era of peace with the temple as a house of prayer for all nations. Christian backers, meanwhile, believe it will be an important step towards the second coming of Jesus. This is why the Christians are involved. They want Jesus to come back and an apocalyptic last battle with the Antichrist. So basically, the, regardless of what the Jewish ultranationalists want, the, the crazy Christians, like the, the, the really, really extreme Christians, they want to bring back the end. They want to bring in the end times. That's what they want. They want the second coming of Jesus and then the apocalyptic battle with the Antichrist. That's what they want, you know. Now, whether any of this is true or not, whether the Bible is true or whether this would ever happen, who knows? Nobody knows. So this this website is quite interesting. I'm going to put the link into this one as well. So you can all go and check out this yourself. Sorry, I've not been interacting with chat at all, but I just wanted to get all of this out there so that everyone's aware of what's going on. So during the holy month of, of Ramadan, Hamas leaders again urge Palestinians to rally to the 38 acre holy site scene of the frequent confrontations in the past and spark for wider violence. Israel has restricted the number of worshippers in the name of security concerns, drawing complaints from Palestinians of unfair treatment and of breaking long-standing agreements. It seems that this, this government at the moment in, in Israel, in my opinion, is just wanting war. And I think they should have elections, in my opinion. Um, talks about him here. So it says here, but the hope that the conflict might be a step to the rebuilding of the temple also resonates for third temple advocates who form part of a fringe that has gained strength under the right wing government of Benjamin Netanyahu. See, so that's what they wanted. Um, he's allowing all of this. Did anyone find out whether the elections have been um, are overdue in Israel? Did anyone know? I don't know what you guys think of all this. Um, I just don't know. But these cows, I, my heart's breaking, obviously, for all the people, but the cows, you know, like they're not even going to do it quickly, you know, like they're not even just going to sacrifice it, which is bad enough. It's just, pure, it, in my opinion, it's just pure evil. It's just evil. And anyone who says they love animals, support and support in this is lying to themselves it's bad enough if you're going to kill it you know do it quickly it's poor cows so anyway my question is where are Petter in all this now i'm sure if anybody else wanted to go around burning a cow um there'd be uproar what do you reckon, folks? But apparently, it's okay. Anyway, right, let me just see what people are saying in chat. Apologies, I've not been um, going very long. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to be much longer. It's not a long stream. I've not been talking to people. Again, I apologise for that. Let me just get into chat a moment. Just give me a sec. Thank you to all of our new subscribers as well. Appreciate you guys. Uh, listen to this. According to my YouTube analytics, folks, um, so far on this live stream in the first hour, we've had seven views. Interesting. Hmm. 
anyway uh what are people let me just get some i've not read chat once tonight we've got 72 people watching what are people saying in chat uh mk ultra says they don't burn the cow alive really well that's something then everywhere i've looked says they do so they don't well that's one thing then even though it's still horrific um all oh, right okay silver warrior says oh it's happening yeah um all we can do is if you really just pray um i'm just going to see what the fact checkers are saying a sec hold on So remember this this cow thing is all about cleaning it's it's all about uh cleaning the people they need to use the ash of the red heifer mixed with spring water to collected by these certain children it, it's just it's insane isn't it don't you think it's a bit nuts that they, they, this is how seriously these, these people take it there are children that have been born up have been born and brought up in a certain way to, to to do this can you imagine being told by the way you've been born and you your holy purpose your, your entire purpose in life is to go and carry some water and and mix it you know to be mixed with ashes of a dead cow so they don't burn the cow alive is that right they just kill it which is which is still horrible i'm just trying to catch up with um just hold on a minute. Sorry, I'm just just trying to find some more articles before we go. Trying to find some proof that they've actually um, getting it all ready, and I'm struggling to find it. So it does look like this. This could be happening. the end of this month the mid next month um what's this here there's a there's an article here let me just grab this up on the screen so you can see it um again this isn't anti anyone okay i don't want people to hate on any any religion or any group and remember this isn't the people of israel this is their leaders and some fringe group this isn't every single person there um now, this article here is interesting because it says here, back in January, a story flew, un flew under the radar that's well worth discussing. And it says that there's a relationship between the October the 7th massacre and the five red heifers. Now, I didn't know there was going to be any sort of... You see, you've got to wonder... What was, is there, um, you know, is there a link between all these things happening? Because the October 7th massacre, is that part of this? But this, this article here, I've not read this yet, is basically saying that there's a link. And I don't know what. So we know for a fact then that the cows are there. They imported them in 2022. They changed the rules so that they could bring them in. Okay, let me just, right. All Israel News is one of the few Israeli media platforms that have covered the quite fascinating story. Um, this is what this, this website is, of how these two groups beat the supposed one in 50,000 odds of finding a qualified heifer, advertising the need to Texas ranchers and then sending teams of rabbis from both Dallas and Israel to examine calves. It's nuts, isn't it? It's nuts. Um, this is, I don't, the Hamas terror attack on October the 7th is a continued outworking of the teachings of their predecessors, primarily that of the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. I don't know what this is, a founder of Muslim Brotherhood. That This article here, I, I think it's worth a read. I'm not going to read it all now, but 
it's going quite deep and it's talking about um, the massacre on to October the 7th could be linked to all this cow stuff. I don't know. I haven't even gone into that yet. My mind is blown. Blown is my mind. Um, I'm still trying to get my head around the cow. Okay, anybody else got any uh, anything? Why would a ta why would Hamas, who want to protect their mosque, want to kill Jews to help the Jews? I, d I don't know what you mean when you say that. I'd, I don't know. It's just gone to Scotland and got Highland cattle. They're all red. I know, crazy. Someone said to me, it's just a Highland cow. I was like, it's not. It's not a Highland cow. I just don't know, guys. This is just bizarre, isn't it? Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this off now because I wanted to keep it nice and short. Plus, it is gone mid uh, gone gone mid, not gone ten. Very late now. So, Mole Mole's already in bed next to me. Um, and this was just a quick deep dive into this, and I hope you found it interesting. Uh, Penny, hearing you say heifer has me rolling over here. Does it really? Why? Am I saying it wrong? It is heifer, isn't it? Or heifer? I don't know. I'm saying heifer. I'm just going to stick with that now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, again, it's. It, I don't like doing these these uh, morbid doom, you know, doom and gloom Um streams and videos it, it i really don't i'm not one of these people you get some channels that thrive on it oh do you mk ultra well there you go then uh you know like some some channels they they love it because it gets views you know if you oh okay thank you silver warrior it's like they they love it and it's all like oh the end of days i'm not into that right even if it's happening I don't, you, we don't need to all talk about it and we don't need to all be morbid and depressed. I try and keep things light and positive, but this was the one of the very few occasions where I had to uh, talk about this because my mind was blown. Um, just quickly, I did, let me just quickly just grab something up a minute. Before we go. I hope you've all had a lovely weekend anyway. Um, all right, hold on. I don't know if you've I've heard the latest, and I might make a video on this, that during the Falklands War, Israel were arming the Argentinians as well. I'm hearing more and more. Um, but I'm just looking for something. I, I bet I can't find it now. For the red heifer. But there was some documentation that I found on Twitter the other day. And I can't remember if I took a screenshot of it. So I'm just going to have a quick look on Twitter. Just give me a sec. I won't be long. But, yeah, this is concerning. Now, the, the attack in Sydney apparently was nothing to do with uh, Islam. Okay, I'm nearly there now, I think. No, it's not coming up. Right, here we go. Um, this was an article in UNN and okay, the person who said that it was um, it wasn't burnt alive, thank you because you're right. So uh, this is this is the scripture. this is this is from the Temple Institute. So these are the people um, that want to do this. So before we go, let me just quickly get them up. Just give me a minute. So this here, what I'm about to show you, is the organisation... Before we go, sorry, I meant to show you this. It's my fault. 
This is the organization who are doing this. These are called the Temple Institute. So I'm just going to pop their link in. Again, you can go and check it out. Yeah, the Sydney Stabbing. Um, Melbo. Melbo. I just don't want people to go away worried. People are already depressed and stressed and worried about things. The world is already messed up enough, right? The last thing I want to do is is have people like panicking and Melbo. Um, sorry, I'm stroking Gizmo. Um, you know, I panicking and thinking that the end of the world's coming and I'll, I'll watch Penny's live stream and you know I'm refuked. No. This this could just be a load of crap, but this is this Temple Institute. These are the people that want to do this. So if you want to see the other side of it and their side, what they, you know, go and have a look at their website because these people, they genuinely believe what they're doing is correct. They really do. Um, you can donate to them. Um, yeah, red heifer. Here we go. This they're talking about it on their website. Look, so they are. Yeah, they they they're they're proud of it. Now that's the drawings of their third temple. Again, this is all from the uh, Old Testament. Okay, there's some photos. They've got to be pure. So not not even a black eyelash. All got to be perfectly red. And they're not allowed to ever done any work or had any babies or anything. So I would just say, guys, go and do your own research on this, you know, like, have a look into it yourself because I'm probably just touching on the surface of this. I haven't gone as, as deep as what uh, a lot of people have. So, you know, like go and have a look into it. Go deeper and, you know, don't just think that this is it because I think there's a lot more to this. I really do. The mystery of the red heifer. So this is all about... What's this? This is this is all about why they're doing it. And it talks about the 1967 Temple Mount Liberation. So anyway. Prisoners are taken. It's interesting. It's interesting. It's good to read both sides. You know, like why did they do what they do? Don't just think, well. They're in the wrong and that's right. I personally don't agree with with what they're doing. But, you know, we might have some Jewish people who agree with this. And that's up to them, isn't it? Anyway, I'm going to go and I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's joined me. I hope you find them links interesting. Uh, I do think that it's worth checking them out. And if anyone does any more deep diving, just drop me an email. You know, we can go deeper into it. But right now, um, try not to worry too much because the, the hope is, is that the other side don't want the war. The It seems to be the West pushing and pushing. And I don't know what to say, really. Um, just try not to worry too much because all these prophecies, are they going to come true? They keep on saying this is going to happen and that's going to happen and it doesn't happen, you know. So let's just hope that they do, if they do do all these crazy things and cruel things, that nothing happens anyway. And then what? What are they are going to do then? They've had it, haven't they? Anyway, guys, you take care and I'll see you all on the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye.